but I want to begin this half hour on the scene in New York because we're officially on verdict's watch in former President Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial. There are several ways that this case could end. The jury is going to make a major decision. Joining us now to talk about the historic case, what could come next, criminal defense attorney Shandell Summer. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. So we don't know what the jury is talking about right now during deliberations to be a fly on the wall, right? But Based on what you heard throughout this trial, what are the key points that the jury is likely going to focus on in determining a verdict? Well, it's a very complicated case in that it's a three-step process in order to uh, determine whether or not former President Trump is guilty or not guilty. They first have to find that he had an intent to defraud. They have to find that he uh, caused or um, did, in fact, create false business records and then they have to show if they want to elevate it to a felony that he did so with the intent to conceal another crime in this case the prosecution is resting its case on the idea that he uh, falsified business records in order to hide evidence of his alleged affair with stormy daniels but the idea is that when you violate uh, the law by changing your business records to suggest that um, something didn't happen. The, the American public didn't have an opportunity to weigh that in in uh, making their decision as to who to vote for for president. So that is a campaign finance violation. And for about an hour this morning before deliberations, the judge gave a list of rules to the jury. Uh, one of them was to look at Donald Trump as a member of the community, to kind of take the, the presence of a former president out of their minds as they're making the decision based on the law. How effective are those rules in, in keeping jurors focused on applying the law and not letting maybe political opinions uh, come into play when making a decision? Well, I'm sure that would be aspirational at best to try to remove that fact from your mind when you know that the entire world is watching what you're doing. I think it's uh, ridiculous to suggest that they're not going to consider that. Then the other idea is that they're only hearing this jury charge once. They're only hearing the instructions when the judge reads it. They don't have the opportunity to take the instructions out into the jury room with them and study them. So they're sort of taking copious notes and having to rely upon the community of information that they've all uh, listen to and try to interpret the law and apply it to the facts. It's a very difficult process and this is, like I said, it's a very technical legal case. So I think that the jurors are probably going to be there for a very long time. They've got 34 counts to deliberate on and there's probably going to be lots of differences of opinion among the jurors. As a defense attorney, how did the defense in this case do in poking holes in the prosecution's case? I think they did very well. They um, they sort of got a gift handed to him at the end of Michael Cohen's testimony where he admitted that he had actually stolen money from the Trump organization. That was not something I think that was widely known until he testified about it. Um, so he, I don't know that he ever had sort of a good guy veneer to him, but he sort of had this crusader type of affect, I thought. And that really took the sheen off the apple, the idea that he was literally stealing from the company. So I think they were able to impeach Michael Cohen. I think that the defense did a good job of pointing out the irregularities, that this was really just an extortion attempt. And the idea that um, these other persons are not charged in this conspiracy, to me, is a glaring problem for the prosecution. Criminal defense attorney Shandell Summer, great to have